This video is sponsored by MSI. Hi Brawlies, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy B-rolls. And today we're going to check out the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 360mm AIO. An all-in-one liquid cooler that features a dedicated VRM fan, a 2.4-inch LCD display, and you can utilize the display to show useful statistics like CPU temperature, pump fan speed, radiator fan speed, and more, and you can even use it to display photos and moving texts. And what I like about this AIO is the combination of good build quality, decent performance, and a bunch of nifty features that you otherwise won't have on other AIOs out in the market. In this video, we'll focus on its features, but I'm also going to provide you with some useful benchmarks so that you can have an idea of what this AIO from MSI has to offer. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, first things first, let's do a quick unboxing here. And the packaging for the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 is actually pretty good. And around the box, we just have some branding and various information, including its specifications here on the side, which you can pause and take a screenshot of if you want. At the back of the box, we have its key features that we're going to tackle in depth later. So let's see what comes in the package. Okay, so inside the box, we have the user manual with detailed instructions and illustrations. We also have the three radiator fans, and looking at one of them, we have a translucent fan blade for that soft and diffused illumination. We also have an MSI Dragon at the center, and then at the back, we have the technical specifications of the fan itself. So it draws around 0.28 ampere and features the Torx Fan 4.0 technology. Torx Fan 4.0 is a design feature that concentrates the airflow towards the radiator for a more efficient and rapid heat dissipation. We also have anti-vibration rubber on all corners of the fan, which is pretty nice. I'll pop the complete specifications of the fan on the screen so that you can check it out. In terms of the connectors, they are pretty standard with a 4-pin fan connector and a 3-pin addressable RGB connector. Next, we have a plastic full of mounting accessories. And of course, like most CPU coolers, it is compatible with both Intel and AMD platforms. Next, we have an ARGB splitter. And then finally, we have the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 AIO. As you can see, the pump is quite massive because it actually has a couple of nifty features up its sleeve. First, we have this magnetically attached shroud or cover. Then underneath that, we have the dedicated VRM fan right here. We also have the 2.4-inch LCD display and the actual pump itself. All of which are nicely positioned in such a way that they don't interfere with each other or in theory will not add any unnecessary heat on the CPU block itself. It also has a pre-applied thermal paste with a plastic cover. In terms of the connectors, we have a bunch here and I'll just pop the diagram on the screen so that you can easily understand them. But essentially, we have a USB connector, a SATA connector for power, three radiator fan connectors, three ARGB connectors, and a three-pin CPU fan connector. In terms of the LCD cover, it is made out of plastic with acrylic plastic at the center. And like I said, it is magnetic so it is super easy to put back and remove. By the way, we also have a couple of promotional paperwork right here. As for the 360mm radiator itself, I'll pop its exact dimensions on the screen so that you can check it out. Now, in terms of the installation, I can honestly say that it is one of the easiest AIO mounting systems that I've encountered so far. First, we have this set of screws that also doubles as the standoffs. And then we have these thumb screws for securing the CPU block. And then we have this AM4 mounting bracket. So all you have to do is install the standoffs, like so. Now, you can do this later, but I plug the USB connector here then connected the SATA connector to the power supply, and then I replaced the pre-attached mounting bracket with the AM4 bracket here. Line it up properly and secure it with the thumb screws. Next, I attach the magnetic cover, connect all the radiator fans to the fan connectors of the pump, connect all the addressable RGB connectors of the radiator fans to the ARGB connectors of the pump, and connect the CPU fan header to the motherboard header. So as you can tell, instead of connecting the fan and RGB connectors to the motherboard headers, all the radiator fans and addressable RGB connectors are connected to the cables on the pump which are then powered via SATA and connected via the USB header which then you can all control via the MSI Core Liquid software. This essentially makes everything easier from managing the power delivery to customizing the fan and pump fan speed down to display and lighting effects customization. This also makes cable management a lot easier since you don't have to plug in the cables around the headers of the motherboard. 
Now, before we move on to our performance benchmarks, let's dive in and discuss all the key features of the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360. First, we have the pump, which is an Asatec 7 Gen pump with improved cooling performance and quieter noise. But what's interesting here is that we have a 60mm fan, which MSI calls the Torx Fan 3.0 to cool the VRMs and the rest of the components around the processor. Now, I'm not sure if the cover helps with directing the airflow, but we do have that here with ventilations all around. Speaking of the cover, it is magnetic, which makes it easy to remove and put back without any tools required. Above the VRM fan, we have the 2.4-inch LCD display that you can use to show different statistics such as processor temperature, pump fan speed, radiator fan speed, and a bunch of other options. You can also choose to display animated content, bitmap images, and market text. I'll demonstrate this feature later once we talk about the Core Liquid software. We also have the evaporation-proof tubing which essentially means it has enough insulation to keep the liquid inside for a long period of time. As for the case fans, it features addressable RGB, which means each LED can show different colors, allowing for better lighting animation and effects compared to a standard RGB illumination. The good thing here is that these case fans use standard 3-pin addressable RGB and 4-pin fan connectors and not proprietary connectors like with other brands. Of course, these fans are made specifically for tight spaces like a radiator, pushing air efficiently with up to 2500 RPM and with an airflow of around 77.4 CFM. Alright guys, with the unboxing, installation, and features out of the way, let's proceed with our performance benchmarks. Now, full disclosure, I cannot really say that this is a full review since I don't have any comparison here, so this is more of a feature video with supplementary data. But with that being said, I tried my best to test this in different scenarios so that you can have an idea of how it performs on our test system here. Speaking of our test system, for the motherboard, we're going to use the MSI MEG X570 Ace, and for the processor, we're going to use an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. And for the graphics card, we're going to use the MSI Gaming X 5700XT. So as you can see, we're going full AMD for this one. For the memory, we're going to use a 16GB XPG Spectrix D60G 3600MHz kit. And for our boot drive, we're going to use the Team Group MP33 Pro NVMe SSD. All of these components will be powered by the Deepcool DQ MV2L 850W power supply. And for our testing here, just for the full disclosure, I decided to test this out in an open test bench so that I can properly showcase the LCD display. So take that into consideration. And even though this is a sponsored video, MSI didn't have any say when it comes to our benchmark results. What I got based on my testing is what you will get. I actually did three different tests here utilizing all the available performance preset inside the MSI Core Liquid software. These are the balanced, game mode, and full fan speed modes. Okay, so testing an AIO is way different compared to testing air coolers because you really have to wait for the temperature to level out across the components inside the AIO before capturing an accurate temperature. So for a 15 minute idle time, we can already tell that our temperature is quite cool with a minimum temp of just around 30 to 32 degrees, spike of temperature around 39 to 50 degrees at max, but for the most part, averages at only around 32 to 34 degrees, and this is with an ambient temperature of around 25 to 26 degrees in a controlled air-conditioned room. Now, here's our processor's clock speed during the 15-minute idle time, as well as the pump speed. The Asetec 7 Gen pump is rated around 2800 RPM, give or take. So as you can see, the pump speed is variable and not running at full speed all the time, except of course if you force it to, which prolongs its lifespan depending on the thermal needs of the processor. And now, here's the VRM temperature captured using Hardware Info 64, and as you can see at idle, it is pretty cool, averaging only around 32 to 35 degrees. Moving on to our load test for a 15-minute IDA64 stress test, our AMD Ryzen 7 3700 excess temperature, in my opinion, is still pretty good, averaging around 72 to 73 degrees and spike just a tad above that, around 73 to 75 degrees, and this with continuous load for 15 minutes. And even with a longer 1-hour IDA64 stress test, the result is pretty much the same, which gives us an idea that the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 can maintain its performance over a longer period of time. Now, here's our processor's clock speed during the 15-minute IDA stress test, and here's for the 1-hour IDA64 stress test. And now, here's our VRM's temperature during the 15-minute IDA stress test, pretty decent averaging around 38 to 41 degrees, and almost the same during the longer 1-hour IDA64 stress test. Of course, the pump speed is almost at its peak during the entire 15-minute IDA64 stress test as well as the longer 1-hour IDA64 stress test. 
Now, aside from the IDA64 stress test, I also tested it in Cinebench R20. And as you can see, our processor temp is fairly decent, averaging only around 56 to 58 degrees, while spiking at max at just around 68 to 69 degrees, which is pretty good. And to be honest, usually, I see an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X temps going as high as 70 to 80 plus degrees in Cinebench R20 using other coolers. As for the clock speeds, it is auto-boosting from 3.4 GHz to its max 4.4 GHz averaging around 3.9 to 4 GHz. In terms of the VRM temps, again it is very cool, averaging just around 36 to 40 degrees which gives us an idea that the VRM fan is quite effective. Unfortunately, I don't have a physical thermal camera to really dig deeper and test those VRM temps, maybe in the future as our channel grows. As for the pump speed, it averages around 2300 to 2600 RPM. And last but not the least for our real-world performance test, I tested the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 in Adobe Premiere Pro exporting our standard 13.9 minute 4K video project. And as you can see, to my satisfaction, our processor's temperature averages at just around 42 to 43 degrees, which is almost as cool as the idle temperature from my previous CPU coolers. So this is actually pretty good. The clock speeds are pretty solid at around 3.4 to 4.4 GHz. In terms of the VRMs, the temperature is also quite cool, averaging only around 37 to 40 degrees, and the pump speed is variable averaging around 2100 to 2600 RPM. Now, if you ask me which performance mode is the best between these three modes, I'd say probably the balanced mode as it provides a good balance between performance and fan noise. Speaking of fan noise, here's a quick sound test. Though do note that this includes all the components on our system, including the graphics card, so there's that. Alright guys, before we end this video, let's talk about the MSI Core Liquid software so that you can have an idea of how to take advantage of that 2.4 inch LCD display as well as all the features this AIO has to offer. Now, what I really like about this software is that you have pretty much everything you need here without having to download and install the MSI Dragon software. Inside the software, we have three tabs. The first one is the LCD display. Here, we can adjust the brightness of the display as well as the direction or the orientation of the pump depending on how you install it on your chassis. You can also enable and disable the LCD display here using this toggle. Next, we have four options when it comes to showing things on the display. The first one, in my opinion, is the most sensible one, which allows you to show system statistics such as CPU temperature, pump fan speed, radiator fan speed, and a bunch of others. You can choose three options at most. Next, we have image, and by default, we have some preset animations, but you can also add yours. Though it's quite tricky because you have to make sure that it is in the supported file format, which is bitmap, and that the resolution is either 320x240 or 240x320. Otherwise, it will not be accepted by the software. Another thing that I noticed here is that sometimes the image doesn't show properly on the LCD display as you can see here. But once it works, it's kind of fun and certainly a good way to boost your AIO. By the way, any twice mina stands out there. <laughs> next, we have the customized banner wherein you can take that image display to the next level by adding a marquee text. And lastly, we have the system clock, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Now, on the second tab, we have the fan settings, and this is what I used on our thermal performance benchmarks earlier. So we have the balance, silent mode, game mode, customized mode, and the GI mode, which is essentially the artificial intelligence mode that automatically adjusts the settings depending on your usage scenarios. And lastly, we have the fan ARGB tab, wherein you can pretty much customize the lighting effects of the radiator fans. And what I found interesting here is the synchronized option, which basically changes the color of the fans to match your display's colors, which I think is really cool. Alright guys, so to conclude, the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 proved to be a decent option, especially if you find all these additional features useful for your own personal preference. First, we have the dedicated VRM fan partnered with a capable 7 Gen AC Tech pump that can certainly get the job done, and in theory, could be valuable when you start overclocking your system. We also have the 2.4 inch LCD display that although it's really not necessary at all, is definitely a nice feature to have. I also appreciate the MSI Core Liquid standalone software, which pretty much has everything you need to take advantage of this AIO cooler. All in all, feature and performance wise, if you have the budget for it, then by any means consider the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to MSI for sending this in, you can get this from the link below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like this and see you next time. Have a good day guys. You're awesome.